Gonna Heat PC is a game that I last played on the channel almost exactly one year ago. In fact, I think that's when it first came out into early access, and it is hands down the best tank game that you can get if you're a fan of tanks. And shout out to every single person in my comments section on those videos telling me that Steel Beast is better. Steel Beast is a realistic tank simulator. It's not a tank game. There is a difference. And this is the most realistic tank game. What's the difference? In the same way that DCS is the most realistic flight sim that you can buy, or at least combat flight sim that you can buy. Steel Beasts is also a realistic tank simulator. But with tank games, you want them to be easy to pick up and play. It's the re same reason why a lot of people play War Thunder instead of Steel Beasts. Look at the play accounts of both and tell me I'm wrong. But in the spirit of a realistic tank game, and also given that Halloween just happened recently and I completely forgot to record a video for it, this is going to be an example of probably one of the scariest scenarios you can encounter in a tank. So just to show off what this game is like, this is one of the simplest missions that you can encounter, which is where you're in charge of an M60A1, which is the most basic of sort of Cold War era American tanks. For the, the people who play War Thunder, this is the M60A1 uh, AOS. Um, so it has the, the stabilizer. This is also the same one that later comes with the Rise passive package as well. All right, let's bring us over here. So apparently we're supposed to be in position. Oh, hello. All right, traverse. There it is. Okay, hang on. We need to range this. Let's stop. Okay. Now we need to range this. So turn on our range finder. You might notice it became blurry. That's the coincidence range finder. And you basically adjust your range until it's not blurry anymore. I think that's about right. So 1500 meters, let's fire. It's reasonably accurate. It's not as accurate as a laser, sure, but it's pretty good. All right, let's hit again. All right, got another one over here. So let's fire on that. We know the range is roughly the same. What are we looking at here? Oh, there he is. Okay, so this might be a little further away. Let's adjust that. Yeah, it looks about right. Oh, it was over. Okay, so I think we need to drop the range down just a little. I think about there. There we go. So these work by those little, um, little round thingies on the side of the turret that look like little Mickey Mouse ears. Yeah, so they work by literally creating a double image that you then have to, like, use parallax <laughs> to adjust to. And once it's in focus, that should be about correct. But as you can see, it's not the most accurate thing. I might actually get that off by like 200 meters. But that in general is how the game is played. It's more or less just like a tank game, but you get better simulation of how things like rangefinders work. And you have decent crew voices that sound pretty authentic to the real thing. Having been in the, the actual tank and in operations and stuff like that, you do sound like that. Everybody's shouting. <laughs> it might sound weird, but you know, it's quite loud inside a tank. So you are going to end up shouting at each other a lot. So one of the last videos that I did on Gunna Heat PC, I played Long Road, which is an example of what you might call a single tank battle course, which is where a single tank, in this case a friendly N1 Abrams, goes up against any number of targets along a simulated course. However, in the newest update that just came out today, at the time that I'm recording this, we now have Longer Road, which is Long Road turned up to 11. So the summary here says, You and your wingman have been cut off by enemy forces for the past six hours. That already sounds like a nightmare. And your wingman tank has his fire control knocked out. Now, for those who don't understand what that means, it literally means that your fire control system or the computers that control your firing and the stabilization of the, of the gun have been knocked out. In some cases, it even means you're unable to fire at all. In this case, we're not entirely sure what they mean by that, but I'm pretty sure it means that they're going to have to manually aim and fire their shots, which is really, really inaccurate compared to when you're operating at full capacity. So we're going to have to drive along the plot waypoints and right through enemy lines and rejoin our friendly forces. Are we going to be able to make it? Who knows? But this also takes place at night because being alone and damaged isn't bad enough. 
All right, here we are. So we got two M1s. We got our stabilizers still on. There's our there's our friendly tank back there. And where's our map? Okay, so we've got some illumination artillery, which is going to be useful. We're right here. And we've got to go all the way over here to Bravo 22. Yeah, this is definitely not going to be difficult at all. So this is the commander view. I can, of course, switch to this view, but then I have no night vision. Oh, uh, wingman seems to be keeping up with us. That's fine. Oh, I did not mean to do that. I pressed the wrong button. Well, we're already one round short. That bodes well. So let's just quick check of our gunner sight here. All right, we got thermals. You can't really see a heck of a lot with. So we're just going to stick with our commander view here. This night vision is pretty decent, actually. <laughs> I mean, everything's kind of fuzzy, but I can kind of see what's going on. All right, that's waypoint one. Just having a look around. I don't see anything. What's that blinking in the distance over there? Let's check. Uh, we can, of course, swing the gun around using our mouse in this view, which is really good. Definitely would help save time on engagements. But the crew themselves can spot things, which is really useful. So what makes this a tank game is the fact that you have W, A, S, and D as your controls. And everything's really simplified. But it still feels authentic. Oh, we've got planes. There's a truck. Okay, there's a truck right there. Wait, why did you designate the truck? Huh? Isn't that a tank right there? Alright, let's see if we can... F hit him. This is not accurate at all. <laughs> Did we get him? I don't know. All right, let's just keep moving. We've kind of wasted a lot of ammo here. So I kind of slightly forgot what the control was to switch to the coax. That's what we should have been using. But hey, you know what? Trucks are not the worst thing. Definitely not. All right, got ourselves a little village over here. Just driving on through. We're just gonna go over these walls here. Wait, where's the truck? I don't see it. What? Oh, it's right there. Wait. What was that? Something shot at me. That was a very bright light just now. I think that was a searchlight. Okay, we're ignoring the truck for now. Trucks don't have infrared searchlights. What was that? Okay, that's a tank, that's a tank, that's a tank, that's a tank. I need to engage that tank and he knows where I am. Firing. Oh, I've been hit, I've been hit, I've been hit. I, I don't think we can do anything. This is bad. Okay, I think it's down, but our engine's knocked out. Well, I don't think there's much we can do, so let's bail out. So we have to continue on as our wingman, and we don't have night sights. In fact, do we even have sights at all? Oh, this is bad. So, um, we gotta aim using the backup sight, which looks like this. What you do with this is, so you set your range on this by re pressing page up and down, except... We don't seem to have the ability to do that. So we're stuck at 1,200 meters. Meaning that circle in the middle there, that's what we use to aim. If it's at 1,200 and then we aim down if it's less than that. <laughs> I'll be honest, this is not a good situation at all anyway. But I'm quite surprised that that PT-76 knocked me out in the first place. I think this is probably a good point for me to restart. Right, so I think the mistake I made was that we went into that village. And as you've heard me say many, many times, you don't do urban combat. You just don't. And the game definitely chose to punish me for that. We got baited chasing after a truck, essentially. And that's where the tanks found us. Now, what's interesting is that you can see the night vision in this... Uh, in in our night vision scope, you can see the infrared spotlights, the... the uh, the PT-76s were using and that's actually how that works because they shine infrared light and this picks up infrared light So you can see it which then sort of makes it a little bit easier to spot some of the Soviet tanks uh, Because a lot of them didn't have any kind of passive night sight. They just used infrared searchlights instead which while you can't see them if you're an infantryman walking around You're not going to see any of that. Oh, what do we have? Oh, there we go. Yep. There they are Come on, hit him. I feel like this is not that effective, honestly. <laughs> All right, we're just gonna hit him with a Sabo. Here we go. All right, relays and fire. Oh yeah, no, that knocked him out completely. All right, let's get the next one. Did I get him? Okay. Did I get him? I think I did. Oh yeah, no, I think he's dead. Yeah. Yeah, I think all three of them are dead. I mean, they're just trucks, but where's our other tank? Oh, there you are. Look at him coming along. 
bouncing along. It's amazing how little of the bouncing you actually notice, though. He's desperately trying to stay exactly behind me. I think he's using me as cover, which is probably a good thing since he really can't aim properly right now. All right, we're going to... Wait, point two. Just gonna kind of slow down a little bit. There's some quick scanning. Rightfully, the gunners should be scanning on their own. I don't know, as far away from this village coming up as possible. Because I just don't like being in such a confined space. Alright, I think we're gonna have to go in it. Maybe if we go on the road, it might be a little easier. Mm. I'm seeing a lot of glowing down that way, and I'm thinking it might just be because one of those trucks is on fire. But it also looks a lot like the uh the glow from the spotlights earlier oh yeah that's a glow from that fire look at that it looks very red at night this is really spooky oh there's the spotlight come on get him did i not get him oh they're both still up they're both still up I think that's both of them down, right? I don't, I don't see any movement. Oh, that one's still moving. Are you dead? Why are you still moving? I don't trust it. I don't trust it at all. Look how bright that spotlight is, though. Jeez. And here's the thing. Without it... Oh, wait, hang on. Oh, that's not an infrared spotlight. It literally is just a spotlight. So I guess we would have been able to see that regardless. Let me just see how bright that is. Oh, that... Yeah, at night you don't see anything. Wow. All right, onwards we go. I've definitely used way too much ammo for all of this. I've got 11 rounds of Sabo. I don't know how much we've got of uh, heat rounds. But yeah, both of those should definitely have been a heat instead of a Sabo, but I think we're low on Sabos as it is. We used way too many on those trucks. Like, I should have used... Oh, whoa! What was that? I cannot see anything right now. Uh, it's somewhere there. It's just I don't know what it is. Okay, that was a total guess. <laughs> so, we're down to one tank, and I'm having to designate everything using night vision. So this isn't good. We do only have two waypoints left to go, though. So who knows, maybe this won't be as bad. Uh, where? Oh, there. That's helpful. Um, I'm gonna go with your over there. <laughs> I think it's that little silhouette right there. Yeah, that was over. Okay, we're gonna drop fire. There we go. So you might be wondering, it's like, how do you do it then if you don't have accurate range finding? It's very simple. You guess. And then, when it... Depending on which way it goes, if it goes over, you drop, like, 200 meters. And then, if it lands short, you add 100 meters. So you always go down, double, and go up half. Oh! Enemy! Alright, drop 200. We're way up. I can see absolutely nothing right now. There we go. We made it like more than halfway. So we'll call it a draw. Alright, here we go. So, brand new mission this time. And we have to attack entrenched enemy armor with this tank platoon right here. Two platoons. Oh, we got enemy... Enemy tanks, enemy tanks. Oh, wait, I've been tracked already. Really? I can I can't see anything. Oh right, I have a thermal site. Thermal site's been blocked. Uh problem. <laughs> problem, Captain. My tracks have already been destroyed. Thankfully, I can switch tanks. We can call for fire. Uh so we got cast. We'll call in close air support on there. And we'll drop in some artillery on there because you know why not. Oh, we got one moving. Oh, a designated target over here. There we go. Uh that's a tank. There he is. I think they're dropping artillery on us. Just a thought. They might be. Whoa! They just knocked out my everything with one shot. <laughs> wow, this is bad. This is looking very bad. There he is. Is he not dead? Oh, my loader's been knocked out. Uh, oh. Yeah, this is not going well for me. All right, we're down to the second platoon. Come on, platoon, advance. We do it because we have to, not because we want to. Yeah, I can't, I can't hit this one. I don't know why the screen's shaking so much. Okay. So, one platoon completely knocked out. <laughs> We're on the second platoon. So that was the enemy advance. Are there any of them left? Because they have a whole bunch of entrenched enemies. Are you still alive? You seem to not be moving. I think I think it's dead. It's fine. I mean, this one's, this one's definitely dead. The crew joined the space program. I mean, look, it's still cooking off in there. <laughs> that's that's what's going on there. That's the ammunition cooking off inside it. It sounds like this that I really wish this game had multiplayer. Because man, that would be so much fun. And not even like PvP, just like PvE content for multiplayer would be amazing. Oh, something that they finally added, by the way, you have platoon commands. So we can we can tell them to move or or like stay where they are. We can also set formations. 
and stuff. Oh, we're being shot at. Or the platoon's engaging something. Oh yeah, I see it. Never mind. Somebody else got him. Get on him. That was a good spot. He was all the way in there. Yeah, that looks like uh, enemy artillery is still hitting our position over there. Alright, let's just give a quick check of the map. All right. Entrenched enemy armor to our immediate left, so let's swing around. Alright, so they should be all up here. So I guess, yeah, that one would have been the direction I was looking, or was supposed to be looking. But this is going to be quite literally an uphill battle. Alright, I think I should change our platoon spacing a little bit. So we're gonna go with a line formation, instead of the wedge that we're doing right now. Since the enemy is supposed to be directly in front of us, I'm gonna increase our spacing, I think, to... Uh, we'll go with 75. Although I don't know if we got the room for that, but we'll try it. Right now this looks like 25 meter spacing, so we're like tripling it. Alright, I think we're good. Is that a dead one? That looks like a dead one. Oh, enemy contact left. Oh, he's already dead. Yeah, these BTRs, they don't last very long. At least I think that's a BTR. Looks like it. Alright, I don't want to get caught in that artillery, so we're just gonna keep pushing this way. So this is where the entrenched armor is supposed to be. You gotta take, uh... What is it? Objective Savage, and there may be enemies to our immediate sides at that point. Possible enemies down this way? I like how the objective is telling me to leave first platoon to cover, and then use second platoon to take the objective. Oh! I didn't even see that. Yeah, that was me not paying attention. But I was gonna mention that, you know, second platoon is all that we've got left, and now we've got second platoon minus. <laughs> Almost immediately. I think let's go with a really close formation. We've got 25 meters and we'll do... We'll do a wedge. A little wedge. Let's wait for him to get in position. I gotta say, the AI is a lot smarter than I remember. I mean, I say that. We've got Ducky over here trying to get into his position. We're getting there. A little more. There you go. <laughs> Alright. We gotta check this tree line. Is there anybody out there? Gotta find out who killed the platoon commander. There's gotta be some- I see you! He's looking right at me. He sees me too. Get him! Did I- did, Is he dead? I don't see any movement there. I think he's dead. Oh yeah. I think we got him. They're just all hidden all over the place in these little trenches. And there we go. Objective Savage is ours. And all it cost us was five tanks. Five entire tanks. Alright, so we lost 13 crew. This is not ideal at all. But I do want to point out something. This really, really cool after action review that we've got here, which shows you exactly what happened to every single round and how it just looks like a massive fireworks show. So this is sort of the shots that uh, that hit us. So, you know, we got our tracks knocked out. Not sure they were specifically aiming for our tracks. And then we've got this shot on the BMP right here, which you can see, this is a Sabo round. So that white line in the middle of all of it, that is the actual projectile. And you can see it just went straight through it. All of the others are little, um, uh, fragments or spall uh, on the inside of the armor and that's all the damage it did so this knocked out like the engine and it went straight through it didn't actually injure the crew though this i don't think was a killing shot this one definitely is though <laughs> so this is a heat round you can see the big white line this is a much bigger projectile, but it doesn't go all the way through. It explodes, right? So you can see all the fragments as it deflects off of the gun breach and actually hits the crew. And you, you can actually read what it says. It went through the... Penetrated the gunner's skull. Hit loader's left leg. Like, it's really, really in-depth. So this also really helps to kind of improve some of these shots because you can see, like, this on this BTR right here. It didn't actually damage the... Uh, the crew at all. This might have damaged the engine and some of the ammo, but this is not a killing blow, meaning it, it can still fight. And then we've got shots like this where it just didn't quite do much at all. <laughs> I mean, it went through the fuel tank and some of the ammo, but that's about it. Uh, and this is the shot that knocked out one of our tanks because it, it it's a heat round and it went through the top of the turret and destroyed some of that ammo. Yeah, that that's a possible ammo detonation there and that's what killed people. I mean, it, it hit the commander's left leg somehow. Yeah, there was like a ricochet projectile. You can see that yellow line going right there and it just hit the commander in the leg there. And of course there's this, where it's just the round clearly uh, 
just didn't do anything. It even says so at the top, it just crushed by impact angle. But you can see how many shots it actually took to knock out an M60 versus, oh, something like that where it just ricocheted completely. But that is gonna heat PC. I'm absolutely loving this game and how much it's developed since I first looked at it. It's still one of the best tank experiences out there and it's one of those games you can get into and play without having to learn a million controls uh, because the controls are exactly the same as you'd expect in any other game. It's just modified a little bit to be more tank focused and all of the, the stuff that you need to be simulated is actually simulated. The rest of the stuff like the controls and the crew positions and all that, you know what? If we were to have maybe a game where you'd have multiple crew members, something like squad, hell let loose, armor, sure, you, you could have it being adapted for that maybe in future, maybe they'll consider that, but even if it just stays as it, as it is right now and develops from here, I'm absolutely so happy to see it because it's still the most authentic tank game, or at least modern tank game that you can play right now. And for everybody that's saying Steel Beast is the one to play, yeah, not everybody is going to shell out how much it costs for the professional edition to actually get the proper sim experience. And also, that's really not the kind of game that's going to interest a lot of people. I would love to see more people playing tank games, not less. But there's absolutely no hate if you're into that. It's just not going to be everybody's cup of tea, and that is what Gunner Heat PC is absolutely best at. And if you've enjoyed this video, don't forget to leave a like, and of course, subscribe if you are brand new to the channel. We play all kinds of tank games on, on the channel, so feel free to check out the playlists. And my name is Panzer, thank you very much for watching, and I will see you next time.